One time I used to recommend people watch like Blue Velvet by David Lynch. And I'd say to him, oh, you'll love it. Comes with a free nightmare. Because uh, it does. <laughs> it's like, Blue Velvet comes with a free nightmare. And when I came up with the joke, it's like everyone juggled. Like, oh, you're yeah, like Frank. Fucking hell. Dennis Hopper being creepy. It's like Dennis Hopper being creepy. It's like, <laughs> not someone you want to live next door to, let's put it this way, at the, at the best of times. Well, creepy Dennis Hopper give you nightmares. You get to thinking other things given me nightmares in the past. Was told that it would and did. Uh, Rosemary's Baby, Roman Polanski, that, that will give you nightmares. Because Roman Polanski, he wants to trick you and he wants to pull the rug and he wants to shock you. So it's like Chinatown, Roman Polanski, that gave me nightmares as well. So I'm thinking all these movies in the past that have given me nightmares after I've seen them had nightmares, terrible nightmares, last night about watching them Lord of the Rings shows. That Lord of the Rings show, that Rings of Power, that nightmares about Sauron and I'm like spoilers by the way um, live action Sauron that was um, one of the best things I've seen done in a in a movie from an artistic sense in that kind of Roman Polanski way where you get the rug poles rug pulled because until he was revealed up until the very moment he might well have been a character that you were rooting for, thinking that he was the good guy, probably the best of the bunch. The rug pull. And then the falling into place as to where I, I know enough about Lord of the Rings to actually, as soon as it was exposed, I'm like, oh, I wanted to see this. Because I've been studying Lord of the Rings and thought, live action Sauron. Because he's just an eye. Someone, others talk about Sauron. He's not in it. And it's like, you should put him in it. And then as soon as it was revealed it were him, I'm like, yeah, they thought the same thing. And then, so I'm like, sat there and I'm like, yeah, this is good. It's like, I like this. It's like a bad guy. Like a real villain, like the Dark Lord. The worst of the worst of the worst, the great deceiver, a real Satan. And it be, hey John, you think you're smart, don't you? Kinda. So you were railroaded into that, through the plot, and you were sold the red herring or two. And there was a twist, but you didn't see that coming, did you? The way that it came. No. Nope. It tricked me in the same way Sauron tricked Galadriel, the show tricked me. And I'm like, yeah, rug pull. And it's like, that's why, I, that's why it gave me nightmares. Because I'm, I'm more than thinking Sauron, it's like we've had a, like an experience of a, a you know, a, 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 a terrible, a terrible, a terrible character, you know, someone who's, Bad, 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 re beyond redemption. The worst of the absolute worst, the Dark Lord. You know, the, the devil himself. <laughs> and it's like, you didn't tell a word of a lie, did you? And it's, it's like, whoa, you didn't tell a word of a lie. You weren't really that forthcoming with the truth, but you didn't tell a word of a lie knowing that that elf with sharp ears as soon as you started bullshitting. She'd be on here. So you didn't tell a word of a lie and she actually tricks herself and helps to trick the audience as well as to who this stranger is laying claim to ancient ancestry but not doing at the same time. And when he speaks of his master. And then later, oh, well, I'm taught by my master claiming to be a smith. Taught by my master. And then you watch it like, because I, I threw it on again and started watching it again. And when he speaks of his master, he's speaking of 
Morgoth. So it's like when you once you know who he is, you watch it the second time round. All his dialogue, this is Sauron. He's telling you the truth. He's not hiding anything. This is what Sauron's like. He's the greatest deceiver. Tricked everyone. That's uh, the, the rings existing in Lord of the Rings is based upon his ability to deceive and give people gifts. So this deceiving gift giver, this absolutely brilliant deceiver and fucking cad and betrayer. Some regards, viewer, myself, watching it, into it, you know. Eating me tea, watching that. You what? Fucking hit me, I'm like, that's good, that. So if it... If, if I can, if it's not been spoiled for you, if you like, be a thing. If it's not been spoiled for you and you watched it every week and they pulled the rug like that on you, you'd be like, oh, the guy who was until very recently the hero who you'd root for thinking was the good guy that everything depended upon. Turns out to be the most evil being alive. The greatest tyrant in all of literature, pretty much. <coughs> There's no bigger cunt than Sauron. No bigger cunt. It's like, what's a Sauron trick? Well, Sauron's immortal. Yeah, yeah he lived forever. So, if he can like, get one elf and beat the shit out of him and torture and torture and torture him and brainwash him and turn him into one of his followers he can have that elf fucking females for thousands of years creating orcs there's actually one in that show a, a, a an immortal form elf who's father to most of the orcs like physical biological father to most of the orcs his children why do you call them your children because they are it's like fucking hell Sauron I think that's what I like about Tolkien I'm up and down I've not uh, I'm not read him enough to be to say whether he's great or not, but others say he is, but I got a lot of respect for him. It's like, he really has, in his imagination, thought of what things those who are immortal might be able to get away with. And to me, that's just tremendously funny. It's, it's a great place to think, but it ends up being really macabre, doesn't it? Because life, lesser beings, mortals, mm -hmm far of them it's like what might Sauron have in store he wants power but he's got absolutely no interest in governing anything so that'd just be to put his fucking minions in charge and they're no more than animals but hey as long as there's no resistance to it but I'm in charge and that'd be as much as he can imagine just as long as the idea of being in power yeah, I like Sauron. Um, admiration for having the balls to actually put do a live action Sauron and to to make his reveal in the show an act of betrayal. That's good. It it could be seen as being almost exploitative, <laughs> but it's like that's what Roman Polanski had done. It's like, who wrote this? And, uh, you know, it then joins the list of what is only probably half a dozen films that have given me nightmares. I, that's kind of cool. 